movie that's going to play on heavy rotation on the monitors at Dry Bar in about 10 years. <laughs> We're catching up with Look Both Ways on Netflix. Alonzo will tell you about it. Oh, God. <gasps> We're good. We're not pregnant. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Let's see where this leads me. This is uh, very much in the vein of sliding doors, only this time it's about uh, sliding pregnancy tests. Uh, we meet Lily Reinhardt when she is about to graduate from, from UT in Austin. She has dreams of moving to Los Angeles and becoming an animator. Uh, and she has uh, a BFF uh, with occasional one-time benefits, a, a drummer named Gabe, played by Danny Ramirez. And um, at a specific juncture point, point, she either is or isn't pregnant. And we then see the two branches of where her life would have gone after that. The version that moves to Los Angeles manages to get a job working for an animator that she really respects, but she hits some creative walls. She falls in love with a co-worker, but his documentary career takes him to far-flung locations and threatens to sort of uh, upturn their relationship. The version that does get pregnant moves back home with her parents, um, who are played by Andrea Savage and Luke Wilson. And Gabe is around, but she keeps him at a distance. And so he winds up starting to date other women. And she feels depressed about, you know, the life that she might have had and, you know, the 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 sacrifices of becoming a mom. Kind of, it reminds me a lot of those sort of like 1930s, 1940s shop girl makes good movies, you know, where... <laughs> You know, you, you you know, Joan Crawford or whoever's got spunk and she's going to make her way in the world and she's going to stand up for what she wants. And, um, <laughs> you know, this is a movie about kind of like following your dreams and, and, and you know, things manage to, 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 to work themselves out one way or another. It's the first screenplay from April Prosser. And, you know, I think she plays it a little safe at times. For one thing, the word abortion is never uttered in this movie. In like, Texas. In Texas. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, I get if she has an abortion, then we have no movie. But like at least put no. it on the table as an option, an option that you were choosing not to do. But like we just skirt that entirely, which I found kind of, uh, I don't know, Unrealistic. a weird choice. Unrealistic yes. for Unrealistic. a young woman who is 22 and who has really specific plans and like yes. an actual apartment in yes. Los Angeles. And a, and a literal, <laughs> like, she's a five-year plan kind of person. So, yeah, that 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 seemed like an odd choice. Uh, this is directed by Winuri Kahiu. If you are a Patreon subscriber, you know that in the last couple of months, uh, we went back and talked about her breakthrough film, Rafiki, which was the first film from Kenya to screen at the Cannes Film Festival, even though it was banned in her home country because of its positive depiction of a teenage lesbian romance. Um, and so this is her first uh, Hollywood movie. And, you know, I think I think she she is very good at uh, sort of capturing you know ambitious young women and and the way that they make their way in the world and that they get what they want um you know there's a there's a definite sheen to this film it's, it's very aspirational it is aspirational it's super aspirational <laughs> uh but lily reinhardt is very charming you know she's betty from riverdale um she is she's i think an engaging sort of audience surrogate you want things to go well with her um Danny Ramirez's Gabe is is okay. You much more want her to wind up with uh, David Cornsweet as uh, Jake, the the documentary guy. Um, but yeah, this is you know it's it's the kind of movie where you take your mom to see it and she says, "Well, that was cute." You know, <laughs> this is a movie that's going to play on heavy rotation on the monitors at Dry Bar in about ten years. <laughs> when you're getting your blowout, you're going to get to watch Lily Reinhardt shoot between Danny Ramirez and David Corrin sweat and go, "Oh, I like her. She's cute. Um, she is really cute and she is really likable and she's got a, a warm kind of almost like a Brittany Murphy thing to her mm, in, in yes, her good eyes and, and yeah, and in her in her presence. Um, and so that goes a long way to making this more enjoyable than it really should be. It's way too long. It's nearly yeah. two hours long. I had to pause it around the halfway point and I realized, oh my God, there's still like a whole nother <laughs> hour here. What more can happen to her? I found the back and forth structure very clunky in terms of the rhythms. It never really got into a rhythm of like, okay, now it's time for this. And okay, now it's time for this. I found her haircuts very confusing because <laughs> 
they're very defining for her for a long time. She has really long hair and longer than mine. And then when she becomes a mom, she cuts it shorter and she hates that. And then she grows it out. But then Lily, who goes to LA, has long hair and eventually cuts it to be more professional. And that's very confusing. Yeah, as a plot point, the hair was not really didn't leap out at me as a thing of like that I was being able to track you know where she was in her life and what her choices were. Right. I want Katya and Trixie to review this because they're going to have all <laughs> kinds of thoughts on her hair and her clothes. She wears shorts and heels a lot because she can. She's a young woman working at an, at a, an animation house. Um, this is a film that exists in the fantasy world where you can just walk up and get your badge at South by Southwest without having <laughs> to wait in a whole long line. That's <laughs> Never happened in my lifetime. It, it, there is a level of like that's going to be me one day here, like uh, uh, on the along the lines of like, don't tell mom the babysitter is dead. Like I can totally yeah. see this. Is like if you're a 14 year old girl and you want to have like big, you know, uh, Hollywood dreams or or art d related dreams, like yes, th this this is movies going to be like yes, more please, you know, yeah. and that's fine. And th those movies deserve to exist. I agree. I think there are. There are some specifics they could have gotten better. I didn't find it clunky so much, but I, I do think definitely could have been trimmed for sure. Yeah. Also, I, so speaking of that, of the aspirational like girl gets to work in the art world, the conversations that she has in the L.A. segment mm -hmm. with Jake, the boyfriend, those are fun. I wanted yeah. more of those. And those helped flesh her out as a person in both timelines. She's just so nicey nice. And like nothing really awful ever happens to her. No insurmountable challenges happen. She gets pregnant and she gets to move back into her like cool as shit, mid-century modern house with her parents. Like that's right. she's got support. She's got built-in childcare. She's got <laughs> space. Like there are no real challenges for her here. She has like and... the teeniest bit of postpartum depression and then moves on, you know. <laughs> yeah. She can, she can get back into her jeans pretty quickly. I wasn't going to go there, but yeah, that's, I will. that's definitely I will a... go there. I had a baby. It takes a long time. <laughs> um, so there's that. And also, I have one more question for you. Okay, so the boyfriend, what is his job? Which one? Jake. The, oh, Jake. He is some kind <laughs> of something i never I, what he does at the animation studio i don't know i know that he leaves to become a doc producer and then it becomes much more clear <laughs> he's just like everywhere for a plot contrivance he just happens to be at the bar he just happens to be there on the first day of her, her job interview he happens to have a desk right near where she works like well, he just it, he's a cute it, hunky plot but he it's... but he works at the company so of course he would be at that party and then of course he would walk through the lobby when she was there because he does work there I, know, I don't know I... what he does there but he works there <laughs> I have problems with this um but I'm, I'm giving it a five okay I gave it a six and a half just because I was charmed by it but uh it did it definitely felt like it's a bit of a piffle 